Hello guys, I was asked to compare the Tamiya 12 speed gear motor to one of the CQ motors so I decided while I have a couple of different types of motors I'll compare all four so I have the 12 speed Tamiya gear motor the 4 speed Tamiya gear motor the CQ Control 32 uh, motor from the Fent 930 and the CQ Control 32 motor from I think it's the John Deere uh, 80, 8345 something like that so I'm going to compare the dimensions and compare the power I'll take a quick look at the dimensions of the different motors now but if you want some accurate images with all the different dimensions of each motor you should check out the description below because on the rctractors.net website we have a couple of uh, pages dedicated to the dimensions of these different motors so you just follow those links and you should get some pretty clear images showing you all the different dimensions. Let's take a look at our 12 speed motor first. So I guess the most important dimensions would be the width of the motor. So down here in the body where the motor itself is you're looking about 30 millimeters, and where it sticks out here at the axle that's around about 35 so we're getting 34.8 so around about 35 millimeters. you might want to give yourself to clear these little bits that are sticking out on the side of the motor here the, the height of the motor or the height of the gearbox I suppose I should say that's about 17 millimeters. and this piece is looks to be about 3 millimeters from the bottom of the motor up to this piece here and then that piece itself is around about 11 millimeters, and then from the front of the motor it is looks to be around about 2, maybe 2.2 millimeters from the front of the model and about 5 millimeter diameter on those pieces there. Now the length of the motor then is the last dimension I think we need to look at and that's about 30, about 31 millimeters. so like I said dimensions for these are on the website just follow the links below and you get some good uh, images of these. Now the next uh, motor this is the 4 speed Tamiya motor so the length of this one about 30 millimeters. I think that was the same as the last one. Width and about 20 millimeters. Where these pieces stick out for the axle that's around about 25. The width here so that's about 7.6 for this um, piece that uh, sticks out for the axle a little bit shorter than the one that was on this model and um, yeah, it's probably five millimeters as well yeah roughly roughly five millimeters uh, height for that as well I suppose we'll take it from the back here it's, um, it's about 17 millimeters from the back and about 16, 16 millimeters from the bottom to the edge of this uh, little piece that holds the axles. Uh, let me see, I've done the width, the height, which is what I've left, I think. So, height around about 24 millimeters. So, this one, a lot narrower, but it's also a lot taller. Both of these motors are probably a bit too big for your normal RC tractors. Um, something as big as this Fent 936 could probably take this. 12 speed gearbox you see compared to the CQ motor it's a little bit bigger and the um, CQ motor is a tight enough squeeze in the Fent 936 so you might have to cut the sides out of the um, body here just behind the wheels to get the motor in but if you wanted that kind of uh, range of gears you could go with that don't forget they're all plastic gears so that you could easily wring the teeth off a few of them if uh, if you loaded the tractor down too much so, so 
that's the two Tamiya motors anyway. Let's take a look at the CQ motors. So this one, around about 29.5 long it would appear. Maybe you say 30, 30 millimeters. We'll say length of that one and width 29.6. Uh, the height is about 12.27 and say to the middle of the axle I'll kind of estimate from the middle of the axle to the back of the motor is around about 23.5 millimeters so from the middle of the axle here back to here around about 23.5 and then the height to I'll estimate the middle of the axle again roughly six millimeters there's a uh, more accurate dimensions on the website like I said so you can check that out the uh, axle obviously three millimeters think pretty much all the axles are actually this one might be different yeah this one's 3.5 so slight difference in this axle that 3.5 is not as handy as a uh, three millimeters I think three millimeters is kind of uh, almost normal for um, maybe model axles because these are three millimeter hex shafts and you can also put in a you can put a shaft like this into the Tamiya motors and the Tamiya motors come with the uh, threaded shafts as well there's lots of different options with the Tamiya motors this this one is a nice compact motor and obviously has the brass gears so that's a, a plus this other CQ motor is quite a bit bigger but it it has plastic gears and I think that's the reason why it's a bit bigger so if we take a look at this one it's 33 millimeters wide about 30 millimeters long and about 12 millimeters high it's a little bit bigger than this one and it does have plastic gears so I'm not completely convinced about these motors I'm not a big fan of them uh, I do think this one is pretty good and this would be a brilliant motor if it came with metal gears but because there's no metal gears I think this one is probably the best choice really but this one is also very expensive it's uh, 20 something euros this one is nearly 30 euros and I think both of these were around about somewhere between 10 and 15 euros for the Tamiya motors but the Tamiya motors have a lot of adjustability so it's kind of hard to know which is the best um, this is probably the easiest to set up because it comes with the CQ wheels as long as you have a model with similar diameter uh, rims on the wheels you shouldn't have too much trouble getting this to work which are CQ models so to test the power I've kind of built this little uh, Frankenstein tractor here so uh, the little bit of wood underneath it just lets us connect the motors back here so we want to connect all four motors in the same place and have the same weight on the front so the vent is going to be the weight and they're going to pull this little uh, thing here which is for weighing luggage so uh, it's going to give us a value in kilograms and we'll just compare the different values so what might happen is the wheels just start spinning and all the four motors give us exactly the same value so that would be a little bit disappointing but uh, no, it's just a little experiment just to see if we can gauge some way the the different pulling power of the different motors okay so we'll see can we get this going with the uh, with the Fent 930 motor so here we have it spinning so that seemed to stall there and the little thing is reading 0.3 kilograms so I guess this tractor will stop when it tries to pull 0.3 kilograms of weight but uh, you know how you'd I suppose it's 0.3 kilograms of dead weight but uh, you know like I said it doesn't really mean anything I don't think uh, we'll just need to put the other motors on and all we can do is compare whatever value this gives us for the other motors so because this motor has slightly larger axles than this one I'm going to have to use slightly different wheels for this test but they are pretty much the same size there's not much difference in them okay so next up is the CQ motor from the John Deere now I don't expect this to be very good if you remember the uh, 
video where I dismantled this motor we found a kind of a clutch mechanism in this so I'm pretty sure that clutch thing is just going to uh, keep tripping away, it's not actually going to pull anything that was so weak it didn't even register on this, it was, came up at 0.1 kilos ok so this one is kind of tricky to do because uh, every time that clutch engages the load comes off the little thing here but uh, it seems to be around about 0.15 to 0.2 kilograms is roughly what it's coming up with so not too surprisingly this motor with the clutch isn't very good it doesn't very doesn't pull very much so let's move on to some of the Tamiya motors okay the next motor up to test is the 12 speed Tamiya motor gearbox and I would expect this motor to have a lot of pulling power right up until the point where the gears disintegrate so let's test it out so that was in its lowest setting and we got 0.4 kilos for that one ok I have the final motor set up here I've had to raise the wheels up onto uh, two cases here just because uh, this motor the axle is higher than all the other ones and as a result the bottom of the, the well the piece of wood that's underneath the motor was hitting on the on the table here and um, the wheels were off the ground so I've lifted the wheels up onto these cases just to keep the uh, wheels getting traction okay so we'll give this one a test now I'll just hold the boxes ok so this one got to about 0.3 or 0.4 kilos before it shredded the gear in there so it's now clicking uh, you might be able to hear it so we obviously broke a gear in here somewhere hear that? there it is So obviously there's a broken gear in there somewhere and that's it just slipping over on it. Uh, usually it's one of the final gears so maybe I'll be able to see it. Ah look at it, it's even freewheeling so the broken gear is obviously the one uh, in here so this gear so this gear is connected to this one and they're still working you can see them spinning so obviously the next gear along that's the broken one so that just shows you the plastic gears can break pretty easily uh, if you put them if you put them under that much load that's why this one this uh, CQ motor with the um, this CQ motor with the plastic gears has that little clutch thing so it just keeps tripping to prevent you breaking the gears so there you have it our Fent 930 motor uh, pulls 0 0.3 kilograms this uh, John Deere motor uh, started to trip on its little clutch thing at uh, 0.15 kilograms, so not great that one. The four speed Tamiya uh, was pulling 0.3 to 0.4, something like that, but then after a while it broke the, the gears in there, so that's a downside for the plastic gears there on the Tamiya. This 12 speed gearbox it um, pulled a 0.4 kilo so it's the strongest of the motors and it didn't break the gears but just because it didn't break the gears under that test doesn't mean that it wouldn't have broken them at some point now this one broke the gears but don't forget that this wood you're going to get a lot of traction between your tyre here and the wood 
because it's a pretty good surface like had you been on sand or something you wouldn't have broke it so if your diorama was going to be all the time in sand well then you wouldn't really have too much to worry about the um, other thing is the leverage with the radius of this wheel this little gear here is under a huge amount of pressure so that's why I prefer these metal gear um, metal gear motors if these if these N20 gear motors came with an axle like this I'd switch to these N20 gear motors in a heartbeat because there's so many different gear ratios, different RPMs, wide range of voltages you'll be able to give your tractor so much more pulling power with one of these little gearboxes but you would be using a lot less current so your batteries would last longer so if uh, if these ever become available with a long axle like this I'd definitely be switching to them, it would be a brilliant idea but since they don't exist yet I would imagine the 20 euro CQ motor here from the Fenton 930 is probably the best that we have available to us at the minute followed by the Tamiya 12 speed motor gearbox and then maybe this one now if you really wanted to be careful with this motor you could just measure the current and when it got to a certain level just restrict the, the um, power to the motor if you set a limit on the current for this motor so I don't know what, maybe 100 milliamps or something and um, once the motor got under a huge load and it got to 100 milliamps your Arduino or whatever is controlling this would just ramp down the power and prevent this motor from getting damaged but um, it's definitely the second best of this one followed by this guy I guess with the little ratchet thing but you're not going to be able to pull too much with that but you know it's not too bad I haven't damaged gears on one of these motors yet so that's pretty reliable I think but that doesn't mean that you can't I'm pretty sure, I'm sure somebody has ripped the teeth off some of these gears I mean they're not uh, indestructible so that's all I have for today so if you like this video make sure and hit the like button and uh, if you have any comments or suggestions head over to the forum and uh, have your share your opinion don't forget to click the link to find the dimensions of these different motors if, if you've used any of these motors and you know of any tricks to um, make them last longer or maybe maybe you know of gears that will fit into this that are brass if you could get brass gears for one of these motors it would be brilliant um, if you know of that you could uh, let us know in the comments we'd be very grateful about that and uh, that's pretty much everything so thanks very much for watching